Today I am making a video as a frustrated white mage. I've recently been leveling my alt jobs and I made a guide out of my approach, which has involved me running dungeons at all levels. This guide has gotten much more attention than I thought it would, so thank you everyone who bothered engaging with it. As you might have been able to figure out by now if it wasn't obvious, I play healer a lot, so the first thing I decided to do was finish leveling my astrologian. Spamming dungeons is a big part of the leveling process and you do a lot of them over the course of level 1 to 80, especially if you include duty roulette every day and you consider Palace of the Dead and Heaven on High as dungeons as well. The amount of bad tanks I've had the pleasure of power healing through big pulls and small pulls alike is staggering, and I'm not even talking about sprouts. Plenty of veteran players that obviously have never learned how to play the tank role are doing tanks for the first time, are leveling theirs in the same way that I am, and seem to have no idea how to play the job. And if you've ever played healer before, like I do, you know that you're in trouble when you have to resort hard casting a bunch of cure twos in a level 70 dungeon for a tank that's uh, pulling three packs and not mitigating. That is why I'm making this video. Of course, this led me down a rabbit hole of trying to understand why so many tanks below extreme, maybe savage content, seem to do little more than their damage rotation and the answer is quite obvious. The game does fuck all to teach you about the role and how to tank in the first place. So I got onto my level 1 gladiator, I had my friend Autumn boost me to level 17 and I went into the hall of the novice to see what kind of tutorial tanks get from the game. Now I hadn't been in here since I was an actual sprout learning how to play white mage and I remember those tutorials being very basic so I had very low expectations but um, as you might imagine what you learned here is not, not great. I mean it covered more than I expected. You learn how to dodge AoEs, how to use a combo, using your AoE ability to attack several enemies. Uh, enmity is briefly explained and you get to use your ranged attack. Notably absent are all the actually important things you need to know as a tank. Now couple the inadequate tank education with the ever-growing amount of skills you get as you level up and certain tank jobs starting with a significant amount of abilities already from the second you unlock them and mitigation being a confusing concept as a whole and you get the average new tank player in Final Fantasy XIV which I then have to suffer a heart attack from as they're wall-to-walling in leveling dungeons without using any mitigation, they don't invuln and then I get blamed for them dying. Fuck. I am by no means a tank main, but I've had the pleasure of raiding with some really good tanks over the last year. I've played Gunbreaker at uh, extreme level content, but a uh, big shout out to my statics tanks, uh, Gus and Ingvar. From them I've learned that if you have a good tank, you'll never really notice how hard of a job it is to execute well. So welcome to my Sprout Guide, an introduction to tanking, where we'll cover what I hope are all the important things you need to know as a tank to get started in tanking and to hopefully build a skill set to eventually become a great tank. I'll try to keep this as concise as possible, but if you have any questions, please let me know below and I'll do my best to answer. Or I'll ask my tank friends who then, you know, tell me the answer and I'll pretend like I knew all along. This is not a savage raid tanking guide. This is for people that are intimidated by tanking, are new to tanking, or just new to the game in general. We'll primarily be looking at tanking in dungeons and maybe some trials, but uh, not much beyond the leveling process as a tank. Now let's start with a very basic thing. The role of you as a tank is quite simple. One, you are the primary target for all enemies, and two, leading the way in a dungeon and running at the front. If you don't know the way in a dungeon, that's perfectly fine. No one expects you to play tank for the first time and somehow immediately know the way through every clusterfuck Realm Reborn dungeon there is. But if you have to, just open the map and check the way because it's your job to be the first target enemy C and the first target and the only target that enemies attack. Now, let's talk about wall-to-walling because this is a term you'll see in many places on the forums, on Reddit and on YouTube as well. Wall-to-walling refers to the act of pulling as many enemies as you can until you reach an artificial barrier inside the dungeon that disables you from going further unless you've killed all the enemies. Successful wall-to-walling requires a few things. Number one is good mitigation. Number two is a healer that actually heals. And number three is a DPS player that knows how to AoE. Now on the note of the healer, 
if you're mitigating well, a healer will not have a hard time keeping you alive. So in a big pull, they should still be able to spam damage. This is especially important if you play beyond level 45 content, because every healer will have their AOE ability, and uh, they'll contribute a huge amount of damage to the party if you just let them damage. That's why the mitigation here is so important. And as the term implies, wall-to-walling often literally means running from a wall to another wall. And it's generally preferred that you wall to wall in dungeons as this speeds up the clear time significantly. Right? If you're just pulling packs one by one and you're killing three enemies at a time and you have you know 30 enemies ahead of you, that's going to take quite a while. Um, now there are arguments to be made of going slow if you're all sprouts and you're all there for the first time. Absolutely, no one's trying to force you to speedrun dungeons. But if you're doing this in a leveling environment, if you're doing this for your daily roulettes, if you're doing this for the experience, then wall-to-walling is by far uh, a much, much faster method and I highly recommend that you learn how to do so. Generally speaking, it is not recommended you wall-to-wall -wall if your healer is very inexperienced or you have no idea what you're doing. But as mentioned, if you're mitigating well, even a new healer shouldn't have a hard time keeping you alive. It's uh, it's not that hard. But you have to also consider the leveling range you're in. Wall to walling in a dungeon where you have all your mitigation unlocked and you have plenty of abilities available to you, no problem. But if you're in a lower level dungeon and you only have Rampart and one ability unlocked to mitigate with, you're obviously more limited in how many enemies you can pull at a time and how long you can sustain yourself through those uh, those pulls for. So in those cases, you might have to slow down a bit, but uh, after one or two mobs uh, or one or two packs of mobs, you should be able to tell how much damage you have to be able to mitigate to survive them long enough for your DPS players to kill them all. Next up on the list of essential tanking things is managing enmity. In other games, this is often referred to as aggro, and all it really means is which party members are being attacked in what order. As tank, you always want to be at the top of this list, unless you're playing 8-man content with a co-tank, in which case your enmity order depends on who's the main tank and who isn't. As mentioned, a large part of your job is making sure that enemies are attacking your thick ass instead of your squishy party. The way to do this is to use your eyes. For some reason, a lot of tanks don't seem to realize that they can see whether or not they have an enemy's attention by looking at the enemy list. The small symbol's color and shape indicates whether the enemies are on your ass or someone else's. In the event that someone pulls more mobs in or you didn't manage to tag all of them with your AoE ability because you unfortunately play warrior, you can always just provoke or use your ranged ability if it's a single enemy or two. If it's more than that, you might have to pull the entire pack to them and tag them with a, uh, another AoE ability just to be safe. If the mobs you've pulled have a ranged enemy among them who is attacking you from afar, make sure you pull all the melee enemies and stack them on top of the ranged ones. That way, all of them get killed together by the AoEs your DPS players are ideally spamming. Now we get to what is likely the single most important part of this video. If you're going to skip everything else and only listen to one part of this video, I hope it's this one. Mitigation. Mitigation in general is one of the biggest problems that new tanks have and they just tend to fuck it up. I don't have any other way to say it. Now, mitigation is important because doing this properly will ensure your healer won't die of a panic attack and then grief you as a result by rescuing you into AoEs. The cleaner your mitigation is, the faster your dungeon runs will be, and the happier everyone will leave. Now, unlike other MMOs, most of your defensive abilities are on very short cooldowns. This means you're intended to use them frequently. It is critical that you learn how to mitigate on non-boss pulls, so on trash mobs, on the random, you know, groups of enemies you fight before you reach the next boss inside a dungeon. If you're wall-to-walling, your level of success will be determined by how well you mitigate. Look at it this way, the less your healer has to heal you, the more AoE damage they can spam. White mages in particular are AoE monsters on big pulls and you want them to be dealing as much damage as they can. Another important thing to understand is how mitigation stacks in this game. It stacks multiplicatively. Did I pronounce it right? I don't know. Example, if you use Vengeance, which is 30% mitigation, on top of Raw Intuition, which is 20% mitigation, you might think that you're mitigating for a combined 50% of damage. In reality, you're only mitigating for 44%. This is still pretty good, and 6% isn't a huge loss. But if we add another Rampart in there, which is another 20%, we're going to only mitigate for 55.2% instead of the 70% that you might be expecting. 
All you need to know is never stack more than two mitigations and only stack two mitigations if you really have to. You'll normally get more value out of them by using them one by one as they run out. You generally also want to start with your bigger, longer cooldown mitigations first. In dungeons specifically, this allows you to get the max value out of the mitigation and allows you to use them again sooner. So when you pull a big pack, you do a big wall-to-wall -wall pull, pop your stronger mitigations first. But OMG, what if I don't have mitigation up for the next boss? I'm gonna die. You'll have it up, don't worry. And even if for some unholy reason you do not, you still have invulnerability available to you. Also, most dungeons don't really have mechanics on boss fights that'll kill you in one shot. Tank bosses will do around 50% of your health at most, which is easily healed. And um, most damage is avoidable anyway. Now I could go on about this topic for a while, but as a new tank that's most of what you need to know. There are some excellent resources to read and to watch if you want to know more about the math behind mitigation and, uh, and all you need to know as a tank. Um, a good example is Ilya's mitigation guide where he does a bit of math and some testing. And there's a salted XIV guide for how to prioritize your mitigation as well. I'll link those, uh, I'll link those in the description below. Of course, you can also go to the balance and talk to the real big brain tanks who will teach you all about what you need to know. Um, those are really excellent guides and resources and I recommend you check them out. Now, at the request of my FC, let me talk about boss fight basics. If the boss is casting a long cast, there's a long cast bar, this is most likely raid wide damage or a tank buster. It is definitely worth doing a quick check on the wiki before you hop into a fight or before you hop into a dungeon to see what are the names of the abilities you should watch out for and what's going to hurt the most and those are the times you should save mitigation for. You generally want to face the boss away from the party and keep them stationary as much as you can. This leads to your melee DPS players that have positional abilities to love you. Flashing cast bars can be interrupted. Make sure that you have interject on an easily accessible button because on the fights where a cast can be interrupted, it most likely should be interrupted. And keep an eye on the boss's buffs. The amount of times I've seen tanks just pull the boss and keep them stationary unga bunga in the middle of a puddle that's buffing the boss uh, I've lost count of. There are some fights that have those mechanics where you have to move a boss out of a puddle or out of an area. A good example of this is Brave Locks or Palace of the Dead Floor 69 or even the Gemmel Darkhold. Um, those are all boss fights where you have to move the boss out of the puddles that they spawn because they do much more damage while inside the puddle. Quick correction, in the dark hold you have to keep a boss inside of an area, inside of a puddle to be able to damage them and not outside. Beyond positioning the boss outside of puddles and in specific parts of the arena, I'd like to briefly touch on the other most common type of tank mechanic which is called a tank swap. You'll normally see these in extreme level content and above, but uh, it'll be the first one you'll have to master once you get to that level. Um, Using the abilities Provoke and Shirk, tanks will normally juggle the enmity of the boss between themselves back and forth, depending on how the boss's tank buster mechanics work. Of course, if you're in a fight where tank swaps are happening, you shouldn't be going in blind in the first place, so watch a guide so you know when to swap. Most tanks will use Provoke while the boss is casting a tank buster, so the boss's target will switch to their co-tank right after the animation is done. Um, tank busters aren't very difficult, they're normally just a matter of timing and gluing your eyes to the uh, the boss's cast bar so you know when it's time to swap. One of the last things I want to talk about is tank etiquette and tank limit break. Let's briefly talk about the etiquette first. So I play on the elemental data center, so this might be different depending on where you play and you know what the, the unspoken rules are of your servers, but uh, here's the ones that we follow. In an alliance raid, the tank of Alliance B is the main tank. On single bosses, the other tanks shouldn't be provoking the main boss because there is a main tank. In 8-man content that isn't extreme or savage, the tank with a higher max health defaults to being the main tank, unless it's a paladin, who is always off tank. If you're an inexperienced tank or you're tanking something for the first time, it's perfectly fine to let people know. If you don't know how to tank something, you can ask for help. People would rather spend a minute explaining something to you than to wipe several times because you didn't know about a tank mechanic. Only use tank limit break if you're 100% certain that it's the right move. In most cases, tank limit break isn't as useful as DPS limit break or as healer limit break would have been because tank limit break requires you to anticipate damage, whereas uh, healer limit break and DPS limit break are quite reactionary. 
A good example of where you need to use tank limit break is Alexander 12 normal during one of the transition phases where Alexander will announce you have X amount of seconds until he blows you the fuck up or uh, Sea of Sacrifice normal where you have a, uh, a section of the fight where the boss has a limit break of their own and you counter it with your LB3 for the tank. Now I'd like to end this video with a couple of notes on tanking as a whole and I guess with a few resources I'd like to share. I find tanking quite fun honestly and it's one of the job classes or you know, archetypes that uh, really allow you to live out your power fantasies inside this game. There's nothing quite like facing down the boss on your own with your party vaguely in the background laughing as the boss's damage barely tickles you and you smack him with your big unga bonga weapons. Tanking is also probably the most intimidating to learn and it's probably the least forgiving class to uh, to play. For endgame content, I'd always recommend doing some preparation before going into anything. But uh, to illustrate this point, if a DPS player dies or if a healer dies, that's normally not a big deal. But if the tanks die, everyone's dying. It can be discouraging as a new tank, as some toxic players might flame you for not knowing the way, not playing the mechanic correctly, or just being new to the role in general. For you, I have a simple solution. It's called forward slash blist add, and then you click on whoever you're trying to block. Because if players are giving you a hard time for being new at the game and trying your best, then fuck them. As a tank, your mistakes will hurt the party the most, as DPS players can literally AFK and just have a macro spam their three-part combo over and over, and no one will even notice how brain dead they might be. But as a tank, you actually have to understand more than just a simple damage rotation to do your job properly. You have to know enmity, you have to know mitigation, you have to understand resource management. Those are all parts of the core tank gameplay. If you're looking for in-depth information about tanking, I'd recommend watching Misshapen Chair's guides. They are among the best and uh, they break down the job from dungeon and raid perspective. They teach you the openers and rotations. And most of all, his videos are very funny and entertaining, which I value above everything else. If you're in the market for more savage tier guides than YouTube and the balance are your friends, I'll drop some links below. Uh, of course, Ilya is a great place to start if you try to get to a savage rating. Now, my last piece of advice is get your fending armor on and charge it with all your enthusiasm. If you want to tank, go be the best damn tank you know. Be the tank you wish you had when you played DPS or healer. Great tanks are always in demand at all levels, especially in Savage and Ultimate tier. So um, if you're gonna be a big tank, be the biggest damn tank you can be. And that concludes my introduction to tanking for Sprouts. I'm not actually sure what the final title of this video is gonna be at this point in time, but um, that's, uh, that's tanking 101, baby. Um, if you want to drop off now, now's a good time, but uh, I will now shamelessly plug my other forms of, uh, of content. Thanks to a big my first video got, I reached affiliate status on Twitch within a week or so, which I'm extremely grateful for. I'm going to commission a few emotes and other stuff for subscribers over the next week or so, so I have other things planned to make this stream more fun. If you just want to hang out or talk about the game or watch me raid or watch oh, me it. level it or worked. just watch me play, drop by twitch.tv slash alzahard. I'm always happy to chat. If you liked this video, please engage with it in any way, shape or form that you prefer, dropping a comment, leaving a like or a dislike. Or if you are particularly adventurous today, you can subscribe. Um, all of those help out in ways you can't imagine. By the time the next video is out, I should have a Discord server set up for anyone that wants to come hang out with me, so uh, watch out for that. I don't know what to do on Twitter, but I have an account, uh, so feel free to follow me anyway. For now, I'm just posting memes. Thank you all for watching. The next two videos will be similar to this, but for healers and for DPS, and they'll get progressively shorter, because it takes only two brain cells to play healer and a brain cell and a half to play DPS, so um, those will be out soon. Thank you all for watching. I'll out.